Hi, it's Susanna with Science with Susanna. Welcome. This video is on the diencephalon. We're going through a whole series on the nervous system. We're starting with the central nervous system. In the last video, I went over the cerebrum. And in the next video, I'm going to go over the brainstem and the cerebellum. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the word diencephalon means through the head. To recall, there are four brain regions, the cerebrum, which we talked about in the last video, the diencephalon, which we'll focus on today, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. This picture on the left side of your screen is a sagittal section of the brain. This is as if it's been cut down the middle like this, and there's a right side and a left side. So in this case, you're looking at actually a right side of the brain. The thalamus, is in the very center of the brain and it's the very center of the diencephalon region it is literally means inner room and it is it looks like that right it actually has two sides and it's connected with a little bridge i'll show you that in a second underneath the thalamus is the hypothalamus that word means under the thalamus and then on the back of the thalamus or upon the thalamus is the epithalamus. So that's how you can see all three parts in a sagittal section of the brain. And then in a frontal section, and I will warn you, this is just my cartoon version, okay? I am not a neuroscientist. I'm just trying to give you the big picture of how these parts play out in the brain. So in my little sketch here, you can see the thalamus and notice that there is a space or a hole in it. That's a ventricle. Ventricles are just holes in the brain that are filled with fluid. So right here, I'm coloring it in blue. This is the cerebral spinal fluid that's filling the third ventricle. Now, like I was mentioning before, do you see that there's a little protrusion of tissue that actually goes across? So you've got two sides of the thalamus and then the little protrusion goes across and then that creates a space where cerebrospinal fluid can be found. Now over on the sagittal section, the little protrusion can, connects the two sides of the thalamus, but you only see kind of where it came out because it got, it got sliced, right? So that's what that little bump is, if you've ever seen that on a brain model, like in the lab or something. And then you can see the hypothalamus um, in the frontal section as well, and it has these two little bumps on the bottom that are called mammillary bodies. I'll look at those in a second. The thalamus rolls. So the thalamus rolls primarily serve as a relay station. and no matter how you talk about it, you always come back to that word relay station, relay station when you talk about the thalamus. A lot of sensory information, not all of it, but a lot of sensory information from the body comes in through the thalamus and then the thalamus sorts it and sends it up to the appropriate part of the cerebral cortex. So that's the sensory aspect of that. But the thalamus also has important roles to play in motor responses. So what it does here is it will gather information that's coming from the cerebellum and other brain areas, and then it will send those up to the cerebrum too, and that helps the cerebrum know how to plan and execute its motor output. So this can help to coordinate and refine motor responses. Next, we'll look at the hypothalamus. So just drawing your attention here to the hypothalamus, you can see where I'm drawing. This is the hypothalamus in a sagittal section. And then here I'm drawing the hypothalamus in that frontal section. So those are the two parts that we're talking, or the part that we're talking about on this slide. I want you to learn four, 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 four big roles for the hypothalamus. The first is homeostasis. The second, control the autonomic nervous system, control the pituitary gland, and it's part of the limbic system. So those are the four roles. Now, let's look at the homeostasis roles. First, it's the body's thermostat. It's your drives, your thirst drive, your hunger drive, your sleep drive, your sex drive. That should help you to remember this. Drive, 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 right? You know you have a drive to drink water and to eat and to sleep and to reproduce. So these homeostasis or keeping things in balance are located here. 
By the way, the thermostat means that if you get a fever, something is going on here in this part of the body. And chemicals called pyrogens can actually cause your hypothalamus to turn up the thermostat to make it too hot, right? You get a fever. And that is meant to help in, inhibit the reproduction of viruses and bacterial cells. Next, we'll look at the hypothalamus's roles controlling the autonomic nervous system. It can monitor and override the brain stem, which is another region of the brain. And the hypothalamus is actually able to override the brain stem's normal control of how fast your heart is going, how high your blood pressure is, how rapidly you're breathing, and digestion, some digestion activities, controlling the pituitary gland. Now, this cute little gland hangs down off the bottom of the thalamus. It releases a whole bunch of hormones related to growth, metabolism, reproduction, and stress response. The hypothalamus releases hormones that regulate the pituitary gland. And then the pituitary gland releases all of these hormones that regulate all these other aspects of your body. The hypothalamus is also part of your limbic system. That means that it coordinates various emotional brain centers. A key concept here, our emotional state affects all aspects of our physiology. Just try to internalize that. And remember, it comes up over and over again when we're talking about the health of our bodies. If you're feeling emotionally distressed, then, or even excited in a happy way, it can affect your digestion. It can affect your blood pressure, etc. And then before I move on to the next part of the diencephalon, I want to show you the mammillary bodies. So the mammillary bodies are these two little bumps that are on the bottom of um, the hy hypothalamus. You can see them in a frontal section here. And they look like two little breasts. And that's why anatomists named them the mammillary bodies. Anyway, this is these structures are very important for memory and emotional functions. And what that really means is that they are part of your limbic system. Your limbic system is your emotional brain. And instead of being like located in one structure or another structure, it includes structures that are all over in the brain and they work together to coordinate your emotional responses. And then your prefrontal cortex can help you decide how you wanna act on that emotional response. But the emotional response is for the most part involuntary. Now over here, the mammillary body, um, you can see from a sagittal view, like if you are again are looking at a brain model in lab, you're only going to see um, the one bump on the side. You can see two from the front and one from the side. Oh, and if you dissect a sheep brain in your anatomy and physiology lab, very common activity, they only have one mammillary body. It's kind of interesting. So instead of seeing the two bumps like you do on the, the frontal section, you will only see one bump. So just be aware of that. And last, we'll talk about the epithalamus. So the epithalamus, shown here, you can only see it in the sagittal section. So the epithalamus is mostly known for containing the pineal gland. It makes a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin is released when it's dark outside. That's why you hear, don't watch a lot of computer screens and things like that near bedtime. And melatonin makes us sleepy. So people might take it if they are traveling and they want to avoid jet lag, but your body normally makes it, your pineal gland makes it when it's dark out. And that's why sometimes it's called your third eye because it's sensitive to light. And when light goes down, melatonin production goes up. It also has less understood functions in both your immune system and your reproductive cycles. It seems, we seem to understand how it works better in the reproductive cycles in mammals like sheep, where it brings them into season a couple times a year. Uh, immune function, this is something where if, uh, sometimes it's uh, recommended that when you are fighting a respiratory infection or something, maybe take a melatonin supplement uh, in addition to whatever else you're doing to try and stay healthy and get enough sleep. And that's it. We covered the diencephalon. So we got through talking about the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the epithalamus. And my next video, I'm going to talk about the brainstem and the cerebellum, and we will have wrapped up the brain portion of this um, series on the central nervous system. I'll see you in the next video.